Now talking about the last year, you'll remember how in 2020 lockdown restrictions were eased at different speeds in different areas, the so-called tier system. But as more people get vaccinated, attention is starting to turn again as to how the current set of restrictions could be loosened. An analysis released today by the Labour Party says that infection rates are coming down slower in poorer areas and particularly slowly in the 20 so-called red wall constituencies that were lost by the party in 2019. Well, we can talk now to the Labour Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham. Thank you very much for being on the programme, uh, Mr Burnham. Um, now, you've said that there's a strong case to send vaccines to areas with lower life expectancy. So, are you saying then that poorer people should receive the vaccine before older people in more affluent areas? It's got to be a judgment based on, on health, uh, Sophie. So, uh, what I'm saying is uh, the life expectancy rate varies very widely across the UK. There are places where it's 10 years behind uh, the areas where it's, it's highest. So basically what that means is in those areas, people in their 60s have the same level of health as people in their 70s uh, in other areas. Um, and it also is the case, uh, I have to make this point as well, that those same areas where life expectancy is lowest tend to be the places where more people are out at work in those key professions. So working in essential retail in supermarkets or driving buses or uh, driving taxis. So clearly, uh, they are at uh, greater risk. I'm not saying this morning diverge completely uh, from the, uh, the, uh, the, the phase set out by ages um, put forward by JCVI, but I am saying put greater supplies of the vaccine into those areas where life expectancy is lowest and allow greater flexibility for people to be called earlier. You said that it's a judgment, but isn't that almost a problem? The more complicated you make the system, the slower it's going to be, the more complicated it's going to be. It isn't speed everything right now, and is it not better just to keep things simple? There's certainly an argument for that, uh, Sophie. Uh, keep things simple, and it does help with the rollout. And bear in mind, you know, it's gone very well so far, and I'm not coming on this morning to criticise uh, the government. The, the minister, who I think is on the programme, uh, has done a good job, and I've, I've said that to him. What I am saying is, in this next phase, though, I think we need to adopt a more sophisticated approach if we are going to achieve what we all want to do, which is <clears throat> to protect more people and save more lives. It, it stands to reason that people out uh, on the front line in a supermarket or in public transport who, who have poorer levels of health are at greater risk than people who are uh, at home and, and, and not particularly at risk. And in this first phase, we've seen an approach where all areas were given the same level of vaccine and everyone moved in step. I think there is a very strong case in this next phase for uh, putting greater supplies of vaccine into those areas where life expectancy is lowest. There's a real debate around this, isn't there? You know, who, who should be moved up the list? Should it be key workers? Should it be people with, as, as you say, where their life expectancy is lower? Um, do you support this idea then that um, key workers, teachers, supermarket workers, uh, as called for by Keir Starmer and Tony Blair, should be moved up the list? No, I'm going to stick with what the JCVI has said. Uh, so obviously they've set out uh, categories, nine categories based on age. Uh, and I think it is the case that um, the vast majority of, of um, serious illness and, and sadly death has occurred in those, in those age bands. I think it accounts for 99 or certainly in the high 90s percent of, of cases. But what I, what I am saying though this morning is have greater flexibility within that. So particularly teachers or support staff, I would say, uh, have a case to be brought forward, particularly if they're in those areas where the life expectancy is lowest and the case rates are, are higher. That's the approach that I'm, that I'm calling for. I mean, there is a case just to take teachers outside of the, 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 the whole, um, the whole programme and just vaccinate people working in schools. Uh, and there is a case for that, and I'm not saying I necessarily d disagree with that, but... but Broadly, let's have an approach here that sticks to what the JCVI have said, but focuses more on communities that, that have the poorest health and where people tend to be more out at work. Um, the vaccine rollout seems to be going really pretty well so far. Um, credit to the government for that. Um, when do you think we should start thinking about easing lockdown? It needs to be done carefully. Um, and I think so far the date uh, of early March for, uh, for schools to return feels uh, about right to me. What I would say, though, is let's not have a return to the tiers that we had before. We don't believe they worked. And uh, the better approach, we think, would be a, a phased 
national release from lockdown where other sectors can return uh, after after schools when it's judged uh, right to do so <clears throat> that also means keeping in place obviously the national support uh, for the sectors that will take take longest uh, to return so we we, we don't feel that the, the tiers were it was a, a divisive approach in the end uh, and created a lot of confusion amongst the public as to the to the rules that they were being asked asked to follow and in our region here in the northwest where uh, Greater Manchester was in a higher tier than the Liverpool city region, where you know shops opened for longer and, and there was bars and restaurants still open. What happens in those circumstances is you give people an incentive to travel from one part of a region uh, to another. And that, of course, uh, can lead to spread of the virus. And I think the figures in Liverpool suggest that that is exactly what happened uh, before Christmas. So I don't see a case for, the, for a return to the tiers. I think the Prime Minister is talking about a a, a national phase release from lockdown. Here in Greater Manchester, we would certainly support that. Um, you say that you don't believe the tier system worked, and from a Greater Manchester perspective, who seem to be stuck in the higher tiers for so long, I can understand that. But at the same time, you know, you mentioned Liverpool. It does seem to work in other areas. Um, if you look at Liverpool, they went into tier three and 14th of October last year, a case rate of 406, 468 sorry, per 100,000 people. By the end of October, that had dropped right back down to 315. So in some areas, the tier system did work, didn't it? Um, the people, if you look at what actually happened in that instance, people say that Liverpool was already showing a decrease uh, before, before the tier system came in. I, I think there are examples where you can argue it both, both ways, possibly, uh, Sophie. But overall, we've looked at the analysis. And certainly in Greater Manchester, the tier system at no point uh, turned the number of cases around and... and, and brought a sharp decline, possibly dampened the number of cases, uh, but we don't think it was sufficient to, to stop um, the, the spread of the virus. And it, even in Liverpool, which was in a tier, it wasn't in no tier before Christmas, the, the tier that it was in didn't, of course, stop the, stop the spread. And, and the key thing to bear in mind here is the uh, emergence of the new strains. So we've got a bigger challenge on our hands than the one we had last year. And the, the, the tiers weren't strong enough to contain the, the old, milder, uh, form of the virus, they certainly won't be strong enough to um, to contain these new, more aggressive strains that we're seeing emerge around the country. So the uh, the phase national approach uh, is the right one as far as I can see. It will just be clearer, be, be better understood by, by everybody. Uh, and I think businesses will know where they stand. I think what we've got to avoid is the stop-start approach that we saw last year, where businesses are able to open, then all of a sudden they're being asked to shut again, so they just can't plan uh, in that kind of uh, situation. We need a kind of, you know, a, a more method uh, methodical approach uh, to this um, to this whole thing. And there's a crucial, crucial thing, Sophie, I just need to say that needs to be in this mix as well. Test and trace is now working better than it was. Uh, we've been working with the national system and, and it's got to a higher standard. What isn't working is support for people to self-isolate. That is the weak link in the chain. It's our Achilles heel at the moment. Dido Harding said last week that 20,000 people every day are being contacted, but then saying they can't afford to self-isolate. We cannot allow that situation when there are these uh, aggressive new strains around. We have to put in place a simple system that covers people's wages uh, who otherwise would not be able to have that support if they're asked to self-isolate. Um, just finally, with your kind of health, former health secretary hat on, there's been reports around this weekend that the uh, government's planning a big shake-up of the NHS, uh, effectively rolling back the 2012 reforms, putting more power back in the hands of ministers. Do you think that's the right thing to do? Well, it makes me smile because I don't know if you remember, but I vehemently uh, opposed those uh, Lansley reforms at the time and said that they would cause the problems that they have, i.e. much uh, greater evidence of the private sector uh, in the NHS uh, and a, a weakening uh, of uh, ministerial accountability. So um, it, it's a decade on when actually you know, we, we really shouldn't have gone down this way in the, in the first place. But yes, I do support it. But what I wouldn't support is a complete centralisation of the NHS, going to a very top-down approach. I, I have no problem at all with ministers having more control, but they need to work to give more devolution to areas like Greater Manchester so that we can work on the ground to take health out of its silo and link it to housing and all of the other things that build, that build people's health. If anything, if we've learned anything this year, Sophie, we should learn that health is built in, 
in communities, in workplaces, and there are far too many places across England uh, where people don't uh, have a home or a, a workplace that supports good health. And what we need to do going beyond this is focus on those health inequalities. And that means taking a place-based approach uh, to, to, to looking at health, a more devolved approach.